Hello and welcome back to the garage today. Let's see if we can get this old John Deere 40 started. Also, real sweaty, just got my second job. So we're hopping right into this. So what we have here is I don't know what year John Deere 40. I used to know, I was thinking like a 58, a 40U, if that makes a difference to anybody. Um, this tractor has been on this channel more than once. Um, I know one time was I think replacing the starter the second time might have been getting it running after it sat for a couple of years outside since then um i know it sat in a shed over here for a while i ended up my place doing a few things and then i just kind of let it sit it wasn't running right and at that moment i didn't have a need for this tractor really good tractor always ran amazing and once it sat outside for a couple of years though that really did hurt a lot because i've got a lot of water in the fuel and carburetor nose plumb full it was not a good time for it um anyways let's get started if we start with checking engine oil and if i remember right you guys might not be able to see it right there's the full line and it's all up to there way over full real gassy um one of the issues we had last time with the carb is i felt like it had a sticky float um and I'm not sure if that's exactly what it was or not. I know when I opened it up, it was terrible looking. But let's keep moving around this thing. Um, as you can tell, stuff's just been set on it. You can see old three-wheeler parts, Battle of the Barn race stuff. Front tires, I never did get put on stuff. Um, I know it's got my one light I put on it years ago when I used to do a lot of work with this thing at night. Um, coolant. It's normally always been good on this tractor. Yeah, you guys can't really tell, but good and green. Sorry, my lighting in here is going to be terrible. This barn does not have lights. That's just going to be part of it. Um, and if anybody's in the real world working on their stuff, that's how it's going to be sometimes. So let's go ahead. I can about tell you the engine's free, but, you know, if you want to be like every other basic YouTuber out there, let's spin it over and make sure. There's no good way of spinning it over, so we're just going to know it's free checked all right let's get a battery on this and let's see if she can crank over for us so i've got my battery hooked up i've just got jumper cables off a of 12 volt yes i do know this is a six volt system still but clearly these connections are not real hot that one needs replaced um also if you don't know any different blacks on the starter because this is a positive ground but let's see if she wants to crank or not Boy, a little bit of gas and spark. She'll run. So, let's go ahead and let's check for spark. All right, we got test light hooked up, ignition on. Let's see what happens. It's kind of what I was expecting. I figured them points are probably corroded. So let's go ahead and scrape them up and go from there. So now that I got those points cleaned up, you can see whenever I open them with this thing that's not metal, you will electrocute yourself if you use a screwdriver or something. You'll see it spark all over the place. Never open that up though. Up. So the points are good and every time they open they spark. So that's what we want. So also if anybody ever thinks points and stuff are scary, they're not. I mean, they're pretty simple once you figure them out. Get them opened up to where like a a business card will fit into and you're good really um like things like this lid can only go on one way i did file up the uh rotor it can only go on one way hope i thought i heard something spark yeah i can hear him sparking down in there which means i probably shouldn't be holding on to that when i did that i should have probably got electrocuted but hey that's fine <laughs> um yeah let's go ahead and get this guy back on I mean, that's really all it takes. You got to pop in. There he goes. That's really all it is for points and stuff. You guys probably couldn't see any of that and were probably looking at the ground because I was trying to see what I was doing. But let's get that thing hooked back up and see if we got spark. All right, here we go. We got spark. Now we just need some fuel, which I'm betting we're empty. I'll get a light out and see, but yeah. There's already part of the thing. We got spark. We'll throw some fuel in here. We'll see what happens. Alrighty, so I put a couple gallons of gas in it. Turned on the fuel. 
we're dripping out of the bowl the fuel bowl but that's no big deal probably just the uh rubber gasket on top there needs replaced i did take that boot off because i was kind of expecting it to run out of there if i'm being honest but it hasn't been so let's go ahead and see what happens so half choke neutral He wants it. Oh, I should give it some more throttle than that. Maybe I'll get you guys set up so I actually have both hands. Clearly, I think I have an air leak right there. If I had some brake clean, I could figure out for sure. Not to mention fuel bowl has a leak, so. Let's go ahead and let's get some repairs done. As good as these things aren't the choke on, boy, I might not even go through that car. I might just replace that gasket, so that'll be pretty quick and easy. Drop it down an inch, put the new one on, be done. But yeah, overall, we're looking good. Okay, change the oil. Probably get a new battery, and we'll be, we'll be back in action with this old girl. So for those of you that never mess with fuel bowls before, I'll show you an old timer trick that I learned a long time ago. So with these things, you could tell in my last video, this thing was really, really dripping. Um, a lot of times what you can do is you take the, you unscrew that, you drop it off. There's a, I was surprised this one's actually a cork gasket up there. Normally they're rubber. So this might be the original one, I don't know. But you take it and you flip it over, put it back in, tighten it up, and it doesn't leak. Uh, this one was a minute ago. I had to make sure she was tight enough. The way I like to do it personally is I like to turn the fuel on after it's finger tight. You're not technically supposed to go plier tight, but uh, we might have done something. But we're not dripping anymore, so that's wonderful. I'm not going to say this is a permanent fix. Once I get driving it, eh, she might start dripping again. It, it it wasn't in there correctly the first time to where part of it was bent really hard. So it probably won't work forever on this one, but for now at least it is holding. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let's get some battery cables swapped. So if some of you guys are paying attention, you might notice this and you might wonder why. So come down here, you can see my starter wire, even though it's positive ground, is red. My uh, other cable over here that goes to the ground, even though it's a positive ground, is black. You might wonder, why would you do that? You just changed them. You know it's not supposed to be like that. Well, I went to the parts store. They had long red, they had short black, they didn't have long black, and they didn't have short red, so that's what we get today. 
So let's get a battery in it now and see what happens. I, I put that six volt on the charger. We'll see if she's worth a darn or not. You can tell the 40's been moved around. Um, I was hoping to do a few more little things, but I'm honestly running out of time and currently running out of daylight. So uh, it's actually almost nine o'clock and I've got to have this thing ready to go by tomorrow. So what I'm going to go ahead and do to finish this up is I'm going to go ahead and change the oil, drop that, get that changed. And I'm probably going to change the points as well. Might try to make a video on that because points in my opinion are actually pretty simple. But a lot of people have never had the chance to actually mess with them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here. As you can tell, she runs, she drives. Um, it does seem like maybe the carburetor needs a little bit of work, but I am going to kind of go ahead and go through the ignition system real quick just to make sure it's not something there such as junk plugs that have been in there for who knows how many years or a point system set that maybe I filed down too much and now they're not quite gapped perfectly. Uh, they're cheap, they're easy. I'm just going to go ahead and just do them, be done with them, know they're right. Uh, probably change out the rotor as well, condenser. All little things that are pretty simple to do and you might as well do them while you're in there. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, 40's back. I'm actually hoping on mowing with it tomorrow, so nobody's going to see that one. But yeah, that's the plan. Thanks for watching. Till next time.